Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at the EVGA 1070 for the Win Edition. It's going to be my first look at a 1070 featuring EVGA's new ACX 3.0 cooler with a custom built PCB. So let's get right into it. Alright, so inside the box we have another box with EVGA's logo on it. It's a pretty nice box, nice packaging. Open that up. You get this EVGA envelope. It's got all your documents in it. It's got a poster. I'm not gonna open that up. EVGA stuff. Some stickers. All the usual stuff. And CD wrong with a little sticker for your case. And some packaging foam. And then the card itself. Two 8 pin power connectors in case you don't have them. Close this up. Here's a look at the front of the card, and what I'm going to do is, as I describe the features of this card, I'm going to compare it with the GTX 1070 Superclocked, because a lot of people are trying to decide which one of these cards to buy, so I'm going to try to point out the differences that I know of. So to start with, they both have the new ACX 3.0 cooler, they both have double ball bearing fans, I do believe that these fans are larger. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure these are larger. Now the For the Win Edition also comes with RGB LEDs, which the Superclock just comes with white LEDs. And there are some subtle differences in the way they look. I'm pleased with the way this looks. It looks a lot better in person than the pictures I saw online before I bought it. Now the For the Win Edition has two 8-pin power connectors. And the reason they've done that is the PCB has a 10 plus 2 power phase as opposed to the Superclocked Edition which comes with a 4 plus 1 power phase and an 8 pin connector. So in theory you should be able to overclock this card a little better than the Superclocked Edition but from what I've been hearing they're pretty much the same. So you may have a little more stable power here but I don't think you're going to gain that much in the overclocking department. So another small difference is the clock speeds. This one is roughly 13 megahertz faster, which will equate to one or two frames per second. It's not probably even going to be noticeable. And at the time of the making of this video, there's about a $10 difference between the two, the for the win being the more expensive. So I think the extras you get for $10 are well worth it. I like the RGB LEDs. It can't hurt to have a more stable power supply and the, supposedly the fans are a little bigger for better cooling. So, you know, 10 bucks, it's worth it to me. I really like the back plate that EVGA's put on this card. And I believe that the little honeycomb mesh here, there, there's LEDs behind there, so the light will shine through there. Uh, I'll find out for sure when I hook this up and test it out. It'd kind of be a shame if they didn't do that, but we'll see. Connection-wise, it has one DVI-D one HDMI 2.0 and three DisplayPort 1.4. Now here's how it's going to look in most cases and yes all the lettering lights up with the RGB LEDs. I don't think I mentioned that this card comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and it has a total of 1920 CUDA cores enabled. I also want to mention that there's a switch here for uh, dual BIOS and this card does support two-way SLI which is covered by this protector here. Okay so I've installed the card into the case which is a Corsair 380T uh, just to show you what the lights, the LED lights look like and give a little perspective as far as the size of this card compared to a pretty small case. 
It was a bit of a tight fit, but it wasn't too bad. Everything I put into this case is pretty cramped as it is. So I've just got the LED cycling through the different colors. I'll go ahead and run that through the colors so you can see what it looks like. You can also set them to stationary colors, whatever color you want. And because it's RGB, obviously you can set them through the whole range of colors. Okay, so now I'm going to do a fan noise test. And uh, just so you know, the microphone's about two feet away from the actual card. So I'm going to start out with a 20% fan increase. So there they're spinning. And now I'm going to go to 40. And here's 60. Still very quiet even at 60%. Here's 80%. And you can start to hear them. And now 100. So at 100% fan speed, they're pretty obvious. It's they're they're noisy, but that's to be expected. Any video card is going to be noisy at 100%. So now I want to go ahead and show you some benchmarks that I've ran with this card. But before I do, I want to mention that I'm having some problems with this card. I've been having some weird artifacting uh, while playing games. I didn't have any problems running the Heaven benchmark. So if you're considering buying this card, stick around till the end of the video. I'm going to show what the artifacting looks like. Okay, so now we're looking at the Heaven Benchmark for three different cards. A GTX 770, a 1060, and a 1070. Now the 1060 is an MSI card and the other two are EVGA cards. Now I just want to quickly go over the differences, uh, starting with the 770, you can see frames per second average of 39.3, the 1060 ended up with a 65.5, which is a roughly 28 frame per second difference. I think one of the, the biggest differences between the two is the minimum frames per second, 25 for the 1060, as opposed to 7.7 .7 with the 770. Now you're talking about three generations newer cards, so that's not that big of a deal really. Max FPS for the 770 was 89 and max for the 1060 is 134. Now going from the 1060 to the 1070, we're looking at 65 average compared to 93, which is 28 frames per second. And actually I want to correct the difference between the 1060 and the 770 is 26 frames per second for the average. 28 frames per second for the 1060 to the 1070. Now minimum, you're looking at only four frames per second, which is kind of surprising. I thought the 1070 would do a little better than that. The max frames at the 1070 beat the 1060 by 62 frames per second. Uh, in my opinion, the most important one is the minimum frames per second because this is what you're going to notice playing a game. So I'm a little disappointed with the 1070 in that area. Now I tried to run some game benchmarks with this card and every time I did, it would freeze or crash. So I wasn't successful in doing that. And I did try to uninstall and reinstall the drivers. I tried to figure out if there were any conflicts in drivers and Honestly, I couldn't come up with anything. So I'm going to try to show you a few of the things that have happened. And if you have any idea what's going on, please leave a comment so that I can try to figure out how to fix this thing. Because if I can't, it's probably going to be returned. Okay, so here's uh, something that happened a couple times while I was recording with OBS. Um, I looked this up and all I could figure out is this has something to do with the video card. I've got my OBS set to 
use the video card for recording. So my suspicion is this was caused by the video card. Now this is the weird artifacting I was getting while benchmarking and pl just playing games. About every five or ten minutes this would pop up and sometimes it would just crash the computer. Other times I would just get the blue screen of death followed by this message. I'll put it up here so you can see it. And like I said, I I totally got rid of all my drivers and reinstalled all the current up-to-date drivers. So I really don't think that's an issue. Now here's a shot that shows the temperature, which was 61 degrees Celsius. So it kind of eliminates the theory that it was overheating or there was something going on with the temperature that caused the artifacting and the crash. Now I've always liked EVGA. In fact, you could kind of call me a fanboy. I have five other cards that I've had in this computer or in other computers that I own right now. Never had any issues with them. This is the first card that's ever given me any kind of a problem right out of the box. Like I said, if I can't figure out what's going on with it, it's going back. I can't take a chance on a $440 card maybe not working after the 30-day return period is up. So I'm probably going to send this back and, um, I don't know, maybe I'll get an MSI and see how that works. So I, I think that's going to wrap this video up. There's not a whole lot more I can do. I'm kind of disappointed. I really like this card. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I thank you for watching and have a good day.